The topics discussed and the information provided on this program is for general information. The hosts of this show are not medical professionals and are expressing their personal views and stories related to their individual lives. Their views are not intended to be used or taken as medical information. If you or a family member have suffered a traumatic brain injury, you should seek help from a practicing licensed physician. We hope to help you. We want you to know that there's some life after the hurt. Hi, I'm Malin Whitaker and welcome to Brain Mechanics. This is a show from a personal point of view as a caregiver, as a person who has survived traumatic brain injury and other incidents out there which seem to end life as we know it. But it's not. We want to give you hope today. We want to challenge you to live a little. Welcome to Brain Mechanics with your host, Matt Duffin. Oh, hi. <laughs> I didn't quite get out of wardrobe yet. <laughs> so, I know it's a bit conservative in here in Wayne County, so let's get my tie on, huh? Yeah. You going full Liberace for us there? Yeah, yeah, okay, I got to get checking. This works better in rehearsal. Did it? Yeah. We rehearsed? Yeah, well, oh, I, I missed that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Go with my hats. Which one we want? Your hat. Got your championship ring. My, got your rooster's my, hat. My rooster hat. Go Johnny Booker Jr. I miss the roosters. I miss the roosters bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. I'm hoping it's around baseball time. Go Miracle League. Um, another hat. Oh, the Indy Clowns. A little history. You know, they were. A lot of people don't know about the Indianapolis Clowns. Maybe they don't want to. They were formed like in the early 30s. Um, they were in the Negro League, American League hmm. at first. They went national, but anyway, they won a championship like in 1950. And then they ended up being like um, the Tatum guy that played for the Globetrotters. He played baseball with these people. Okay. So it was also an enjoyment kind of thing mm -hmm. to go watch them. And they lasted forever. Um, until the late 80s, 89, yeah. I think. I'm unfamiliar with them, so. We learned something every indeed, day. Indeed, indeed. Huh. And that's why we're here to learn. That's right. Well, I'm supposed to be dressed. I'm gonna find, well, I, I'd like find to my hat to, today's Oh, I will. I will. I'm us. getting there. You're getting to that? I got to get dressed. Oh. The hat that matters with the ring that matters. Okay. 2017. World champion, Jennifer Goodman. <laughs> My co-host from the radio show, The Matt Duffin Show. Hey. <laughs> We're bringing her on. We're going to talk about uh, instant and not so instant aftercare. Mm -hmm. And I know you have a lot of work and training in aftercare yourself. Um, for not having a TBI yourself, you understand uh, it quite a bit. <laughs> well, as as I've said in previous shows, uh, <clears throat> all I knew of traumatic brain injury was that I rode a lot of motorcycle, and you would talk to someone, and he had a wreck, and you'd, they'd say, uh, "Dick's a little different now, you know, just uh, he's different." And uh, you might go see him in the hospital, and then something, you know, later. Th that the extent of brain injury. That, that's all I knew. Then my wife was a victim of a crime. And now I had to learn all about brain injury, uh, from nutrition to care to um, how to reintroduce yourself. I know that sounds silly, but uh, uh, many times in the, her particular case, everything had been wiped. So we, we went from running a, a very successful small business, and uh, she's my, my right hand, literally, and, uh, you know, the next day, 
Uh, she's in the ER with uh, traumatic uh, wounds and brain injury and so on, and, and you, you got this uh, gonna make it, not gonna make it kind of things, and it, it causes you to examine everything from how you run your business to your personal faith. Uh, in my particular case, I reestablished my personal faith because it was a favor that I asked of the big guy, and having asked a favor of the big guy and he granting you something, you better be good, and so I'm trying to be good. Uh, Please do what you told him you was going to do. Yeah, I stand by her no matter what her percentage of recovery. But uh, the important thing is, is whether you're a caregiver or a, uh, you've received a traumatic brain injury or someone in your family, don't give up hope. And that's what this show is about today. And that's uh, Jennifer's with us uh, uh, to talk about care, uh, uh, post care that uh, as well, that is certainly much later than the event, but still nonetheless important. And so Jennifer, could you uh, give us your, your story there? Sure. Um, in 1995, I was in a car with a drunk driver and we flipped a Corvette about 15 times, going 130 down the interstate, and I got thrown out, threw out, excuse me, and I broke my jaws, and my punctured my lung, and I broke my pelvis, and my right arm was pretty much detached from my body, mm. and I got the great TBI, <laughs> and I was unconscious for 31 days. And when I came to, it was somewhat like I knew. My mother was telling me, but I knew I was different then. And that's when rehab started. Mm -hmm. And- So it was after you was discharged 31 days from inpatient. Right. They started uh, you on aftercare. Right. That's the University of Birmingham. Yes, well, the UAB. University. UAB. Mm -hmm. and What's that A stand for? University, University of, Alabama. of Alabama. Roll Tide Roll. That's what you took it serious. <laughs> yes, I did. <coughs> and um, I was at Spain Rehab, which is connected. They are connected. And so what they would do is Spain worked with UAB, mm -hmm. so it was mm -hmm. a collaboration of doctors. And um, they started me with speech therapy and the physical therapy and occupational therapy. And they got me talking, walking, moving somewhat back to normal. And that was, <coughs> uh, my wreck happened January 6th and on St. Patrick's Day, you're, you're out of here. I'm out of there. Now, it, it, physically, it appears that you made an incredible recovery. Yes. And, uh, good Lord was good. Yes. And how old were you at the time? I was 19. 19? Oh, kind so you person. had the whole, everything ahead of you and now She this. was in college. Wow. And in college, you know, fraternity type party, yaddy, sure. kids go sure. nuts. Yeah. Uh, um, kids in Corvettes are uh, challenging. Well, you you went through this, uh, and, and uh, now you're here, and I see you've got the home in Indiana yes. shirt on. Yes. And you're you're now uh, residing here. Yes. And uh, my understanding, and this is what we want people to understand too, is that you know it's never too late to keep getting started. You know, the, no. the most important day to plant a tree was yesterday, but today will do. Yes. And so, from the rehab point of view, you're actually going into some rehab, which we've pre done previous shows on, right. for RHI, Rehabilitation yes. Institute, uh, uh, there. This is the overall goal. Right. You know, right now, I mean, it's a basic start. You gotta start with the state. Mm -hmm. Go to vocational rehab, you know, contact uh, around here, contact shell bound. Um, <coughs> and once, right. once you get into voc rehab and, and some testing through there, they'll lead you to the direction you need to go. Okay. Um, one of her and one of my strong suggestions when we had a meeting was for her to go to Bix mm -hmm. overall brain injury coping skills. Okay, I think it'll do wonders for her even after 20 years. You know, I, I went to Bix a few times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I went from people that had just had an accident. And, maybe not waited long enough before they went to class because they're still out there, law land, I call it. Mm -hmm. um, 
and people that had been 15, 20 years. It didn't matter. They learned something each and every time. It was, it's a coping skill. And I still believe coping skills and life skills should be taught as an eighth grader or a ninth grader in school. Mm -hmm. um, well, we can see people that are college graduates, college educated people. I see them, you know, uh, on the political side, they're literally crying yes. because someone got elected or unelected and, or that they're, you know, there's, there's a, a, a statue and, you know, they're upset because the statue represents something that they don't. I, I mean, obviously coping skills are missing in our society. I mean, you, you even hear in about general. people climbing through drive through windows to attack an employee at a McDonald's because they didn't get cheese on their cheese. I mean, obviously coping skills is not just limited to the brain injured. However, I think what's important to know in the, in, in the case of my wife's injuries, it happened in 2001, and we were able to get into it at that time, a, a, a almost experimental type program. And it was one that was beyond just the, you know, sit up, talk, walk uh, kind of thing uh, that, that most people had experienced before. So well, I think it w that's And that was in the early 90s. Headed, right? And I mean, obviously Matt has talked about it, but you're, you're headed there. I, I need life skills. I need okay. coping skills. And everyone that I've spoke to about Biggs told me this is going to change my life. This is it. Yeah. This well, I'd is met it. Her, I met her through the radio, and I invited okay. her to come up. because She's getting nothing. She's one of my listeners that I had that, mm -hmm. you know, nothing, some states offer no, no recovery methods at all. You right. know, just right. you're fixed now, you're out the door. Um, we, up and down the administrative chain, <laughs> Indiana still has a great position to work with people with brain injuries. They still have a lot of grants and working with, with natural citizens that they do. So, you know, she's moved her citizenship from Alabama to wow. here. Well, no, that's great. To, to become, to learn again, because she wasn't doing it very strongly. Well, no, Matt, I've always watched you encourage people. I mean, since, you know, uh, this had happened to you and my wife, and we've talked back and forth. I mean, we're, we're residents of the same small town. We went to school, same little school together. And Go so sharpshooters. <laughs> Milton sharpshooters. Don't you have a hat. And, uh, but uh, to seek out additional help. And it used to be, I would say, that it was very difficult, or maybe in your particular area, since you may be watching us on YouTube or whatever, your state may or may not have these programs, but there, there is abundance elsewhere. And well, so, you know, don't be afraid to look and seek out. Uh, Matt is, is one of those people through this show, and, and, and then the brain injury radio uh, show, the, which is an internet kind of thing. Uh, so, I mean, there are some resources for you out there. And I think the important thing that I see, and especially with my wife, was that it can set in, and Jennifer, you're going to have to tell me, but there's this thing where you, this hopelessness. Yes. And there's nothing more damaging to anyone to think that, well, you know, this is it for me, or there's, you know, there's nothing for me. Uh, because it affects relationships as well. Did you yes. experience that with your family or friends? Yes. Yes, when you have nowhere else to go, mm -hmm. when you have, you only have a doctor, a neurologist, mm -hmm. and all they want to do is throw pills at you, mm -hmm. that, that's the bottom you can go. And when these miracle pills don't work for you, mm -hmm. all they do is make you cry, make you feel worse. Well, depressed or whatever. Yeah. More depressed than where, he <coughs> called me. He it's called still me. a study. It's a practice. <laughs> You know, and it's only been around for 20 years that they've really seriously started doing the work that they do with your brain after I guess brain injury. the last 17 years. I mean, we, in Incredible. the particular case, uh, it was called hook rehab then, mm -hmm. uh, a long time ago and far, far away. But uh, uh, this was done as an experiment, literally, yes. uh, at... Uh, right at uh, 10th Street uh, IU Hospital there in, in Indianapolis. Well, that's what, you know, the six times that I took Bix, that's what mm -hmm. I was there for to continue on. So all these Bix books that we had mm -hmm. throughout the years, 
you know, now it's one. And it's quite a... Looks pretty thorough. It's pretty thorough. <laughs> you can find it online on uh, Lash and, uh, and Lash... Um, you think about it, and we'll come back to they're that. They're a public, yeah, they're a publisher. <laughs> they do all kinds of brain injury publications. publications. Well, um, we, we'll see if we can't get a resource to uh, uh, tag into the, uh, to the end of the program or whatever places you might go and things you might do. Yeah, because there's a lot of things that they need to do, like mm -hmm. what he was talking about, you know, the, there's translators online that you can get. So if somebody's Hispanic or right. another language. Um, identification oh. cards are good to get. Mm -hmm. I have one. Yep. Um, chains, ID cards. I wear a whole bunch. You know, uh, mm -hmm. things that identify to people that you have a traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. in brain case important. there's an emergency or something going on. Um, there's all kinds of reference material on, on, on this site that we was talking about. It could just do a lot of good for you. Especially when, when you're in a condition such as we were, you were, you think you're on an island alone. Yeah. But she's finding out now that she's not. She's not. In How 20 did, years, how, she, she, she <coughs> she's called as an island alone. So we, we, we're going on 22 years since you're... 23. Your 20, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, 23. I wasn't counting as this year January yet. As of January 6th this year. Oh, okay, so it 23 years. It was just years. my anniversary. But, how does it feel to have hope versus those other 23 years? It's just like it just happened. It's just like it just happened it yeah. all over again. Do you, it, it, do you feel that you've got I'm a better a, prospect now? Yes, I'm, I'm eager. I'm anxious. I can't wait. <laughs> I know that. I see it in your eyes. Yeah. That's sad. It's sad. No, no, but, no, no. Um, I mean, tomorrow, today is the best day to plant a tree. You know, I mean, if, you, if you're going to, in using a, a farm kind of analogy there, but uh, it would have been better 20 years ago. Yes. But, but it wasn't I'd, available 20 I years ago. It wasn't available, and I'm so eager. So here we are now, and this is really neat for you. I'm oh, so happy I'm for you. So, I'm so anxious. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm ready to open this book. Good. This book needed to be opened 20 years ago. But you know what? It's opening now and this is going to help me for the rest of my life. Good. So Good. yay. This is wonderful. Are you going to yeah. read the sections I helped write? Of course. <laughs> Well, Matt, Matt obviously is deeply involved in this and uh, has been, uh, uh, he was a, a, a motorcycle crash. Uh, I'm a believer in it. So, uh, you're, you're, you're uh, even though we, we're, you know, we do our disclaimer, we've been there, done that, got the t-shirt uh, joke uh, is uh, real, but now we've got the t-shirt that says Indiana in your home. There we go. So, I, I think that's a wonderful thing. Is there, uh, do you have a particular goal in mind, Jennifer? My goal is Bix. That is my goal okay. right now. To be there, do that. To be there and do that. And then my next goal is to be back and tell you how well I did. All right. How about that? Well, there you go. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Me too. All right. Wonderful. Well, Matt, how would you encourage people to reach out for this kind of care? What, what Are there some resources that we can direct people to? Maybe I... Uh, we, we lucked out uh, in the case of my wife. Directly, and they're hard to get in contact with, even though it's a contact us. Mm -hmm. um, Brain Injury Association of Indiana, Brain Injury Association of America. Mm -hmm. There's a list of contacts. I know most of the presidents yes. and people like that. Okay. Pat myself in the back again. Parts just flew. <laughs> it's okay. To me. I won't tell on you. But, um, it's an old racing expression. Yes, I understand. They're not going to do it. When you get for, out of the hospital, there's a quick briefing, but you're mm. so freaked out, and you're, you're, yes. your patient's finally coming home, and they don't got a clue what's going on. Well, now, and here's a challenge that I can throw out for you. I mean, for those of you that have someone that's uh, stroke, TBI, you know, there are various other brain injuries, I won't go through the whole list. When they come home, Candy. it may not be the same person that went away those 31 or 60 they days or a year ago. And 
you have to learn to reintegrate yourself with them. Uh, That's right. Uh, their actions may be different, their reactions, their perceptions. Uh, in my wife's case, um, she took my talking to her as a criticism and would start crying. It's like, what, what, mm -hmm. what are you crying about? And it's like, you, you know, and, and, and very upset. And so that was one of the issues that we had to deal with. Um, the, uh, it's hard to do that. Oh, and the perceptions of family and friends. You know, I right. mean, the, fam my, the, my immediate family was great. They'd do anything for mom, you know. But uh, you've got the extended family, and, right. and a lot of times, you know, they, they, if you really uh, hang in there, unfortunately, a lot of people don't hang in. That's right. You know, on marriages and this type well, of thing. Right. And there's a degree of traumatic, and just like mm -hmm. every other branch, it has several little paths it can go off to. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it traumatic. Yeah. You know, yes. traumatic's not, it's not something we grow in our head that got hurt. Yeah. It's just that your, your body is just out of shocks. Yeah. Well, I think, though, there, there's stroke victims and the like could uh, be helped by this same type of mm -hmm. program, could they oh, not? Oh, yeah, I mean, a bunch. You know, it's not just... Not just a, a hit of the head or anything like that. Having the privilege to go to all those classes, I met more brain injured people than I figured I ever would in my life mm -hmm. from various different degrees. I met a beautiful young lady that her ponytail had been yanked out of the back of her head by a golf cart um, down in Bloomington. You know, seniors riding golf carts, having fun. Mm -hmm. Beautiful long hair. Oh, gosh. And she was striking it back, but you know. All that long hair was gone, and mm -hmm. her head was scalped. Yeah, yeah. No, she was, yeah, scalped. I mean, it was yeah, just. Literally, yeah. I mean, I've seen guys with wires that come down in the work site and hit them and shocked yeah. them. Mm -hmm. You know, next thing you know, there's 30,000 volts going through your body, and you oh, made what? it. Um, but it screws you up. I don't know how else to put that. There's, <laughs> you've covered it. It's, it's just one of those things where I, I think that uh, as far mm -hmm. as. We, as far as what Matt, Jennifer, and I want to leave you with, is we want to leave you with hope, and that there, that this didn't end at all. It it's sure as hell not fun, and it's definitely a challenge. But as as the injured, never surrender, never Can't. give up. As the caregiver. You have to learn and re-understand that person that you love. It's going to be a challenge. Hang in there. Uh, don't Wanna. forget. Don't forget. Not just consulting medical professionals, but spiritually, uh, prayer helps. Okay, uh, just I'll say it that way. Uh, don't forget you and the big guy, and, and uh, be be willing to ask a favor, and then if favor is granted, be willing to perform, and if it's not, continue to pray. The other thing is, is look at diet exercise, all these things. I mean, you've gone through this, so you know. Both well, that's why you, you say, first of all, you don't want to die. No. You know, and suicide is our number one killer of brain injured survivors. Yeah. Right. Um, You're better than that. You and everybody didn't go through all that work to save your <laughs> life, to turn around, just throw it away. Right. So um, there's reasons you're here. Find them, you know. Is it going to be the old way? No. I went back to writing sports. I was writing, working, and helping the Butler yeah. and the Pacers again. So it didn't work. Yeah. But, again, we got support groups all throughout the state here. We got 25. In the state of Indiana, there are. And, and 25 of them, I think, and that is more than most five or eight states combined. But yeah. we have a lot. Get a hold of somebody. Look online. Yeah, Indiana's you'll find a group. very strong in that regard. Under yeah. the Brain Injury Association of Indiana, you know, it's... They're rebuilding it all. We're rebuilding the whole process, the whole ball game. It fell apart a couple of years ago, and yeah. they've decided to rebuild it instead of just let it walk away. Yeah. Cool. Um, which I think that's what you do with brain injured people. Well, I think you know, everybody has their challenges, whether it's running a support group like that or whether it's. Uh, but please get involved. Okay. Don't be afraid to be involved. Don't be afraid. Because you try, and this is a guy thing, you try two or three things that you're told to do and it doesn't work. So don't give up. Never give up. And we've got Jennifer here. She 
22, 23 years. Oh, just checking to see if you're counting. (laughs) 23 years ago. I think she was a baby, but anyway. 23 years ago, the 6th, you were riding in a Corvette, having uh, an exciting time going down the interstate at 130 miles an hour, and then nothing. And so she's rebuilding her life. Be proud of her. Let Matt and Jennifer be an inspiration to you that it's never too long away to do it. It's never over. Okay? You can do this. I want to close out with a little program note. And thank you very much, Jennifer. (coughs) Malin, great job as always when you're here. I mean, thank you. We're busy. We've got to take a break. We're busy. (laughs) Um, Was that no one knows the value of water until the well runs dry? That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Looking for some water from a deeper well. You know, I want exercises will teach you how to focus your thoughts, and emotions, and brain, physical sensations. You know, if you're freaking out, stress, this will help. You know, just real quick, three minutes, and we don't have that much time, add it. But, you know, have an inner outer experience. Combine being mindful, both in the outer world and in your other world, for about 10 minutes. You know, take a few long breaths and relax. Stay private. Focus on an object. Focus on your body. Focus on sounds. Focus back on your body. Focus on the smell. Go back to your body. Focus on touch. Take a few long breaths and relax. So if you do that for around three minutes of thought, You'll discover how quick and how mindful your mind really is. You know, focus on a subject, focus on your body, focus on sounds, focus on your body, focus on smell, focus on touch, use your resources. And you set a timer for three minutes and you begin writing every thought that comes to your mind after you're done. You don't need sentences, you don't need to be a journalist. You can multiply that by 20 and estimate how many thoughts you have in an hour. I'm Matt Duffin. Thank you for watching The Brain Mechanics. Topics discussed and the information provided on this program is for general information. The hosts of this show are not medical professionals and are expressing their personal views and stories related to their individual lives. Their views are not intended to be used or taken as medical information. If you or a family member have suffered a traumatic brain injury, you should seek help from a practicing licensed physician.